Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So, um, I travelled further afield than I have before. I went to Warwick and um, I went there before Christmas and um, got permission to film in Warwick Antique Centre. It's, it was great. They have lots of old glass, my favourite. And um, yeah, so this is going to be long. This is going to be really long. It's going to be a two-parter. I've only um, finished filming the re references and editing together the first half. And uh, yeah, it's going to be an epic. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, they were very inviting, very friendly there. And um, I can thoroughly recommend going for a trip. Warwick's very nice as well. So um, yeah, I, I recommend it. And, um, and I've got another centre to do there as well. So yeah. They're very very friendly place so with that said um let's get on with this um epic video or the first half of this epic video so here we go today i'm at uh, warwick antique center as you can see um it's in jury street um it's a very historic town you see this is quite a narrow road um but it's one of the main roads in, in the town center nice um can you see it? Nice little church down the end there. But um, yeah, so this is where I am today. I've not, I've only been here once before, and this is the first time I'm filming in here. There is a lot of old glass in here, so this is going to be a really good show. Um, it might even have to be a two-parter. So uh, with that said, uh, let's get on and uh, get doing the Warwick Antique Centre. Crown noise, but I'm starting outside because they have a nice window. And um, yeah, look at this. This is um, John Walsh Walsh. Um, it's very nice. I'll be able to show you a reference for that. Um, you can see the little pattern inside the top there. Yeah, that's a really nice piece. Um, that, that's uranium glass, so that will glow in the dark. The book I'm looking at here is called The Glass of John Walsh Walsh. There's a, there we go. Um, by Eric Reynolds. And yeah, you can see this is the kind of glass that Walsh Walsh did. They did lots of these... Um, brocade style patterns um, there's a few more over here you see but you can see these this is the bars I think that's the most similar the one we're looking at I think the one we saw is called tulip um, I'll have a quick google and um, try and find it so I did a quick google and um, yep yeah, I found these two here so this one here with tulip written on it and you can see it has that same sort of like forky pattern at the top and then there's a different one here with a different shape but still that same forky pattern yep and there's different patterns there's brocade and iris and all sorts of flurry form and stuff like that lots of different ones you can see not all of these I don't think are John Walsh Walsh but those ones are I think like this one here, I think this is brocade. Anyway, um, with that said, we'll move on. We got some nice early 19th century um, wine glasses. That one on the left might even be older. Yeah, um, in fact, actually though, this, this one on the right is probably a newer one that's gonna be late 19th century and this one's gonna be early. Um, yeah, penny lick. Um, you'd put a little bit of ice cream in that and you, for a penny and you'd lick the top out. He's got some interesting things here because he's telling you these are copies and they do look, the glass looks very bright on them. So that's, he's correct there. Oh, and this is nice. This is a um, Stuart Crystal, really nice piece. Um, can't see the price, oh, 75 pounds. Yeah, that's um, the pattern that they, you see with this here. That's called Arundel. Um, yeah, so this is nice. So, interesting tale with that glass. Um, this is the 1927 Stuart Crystal catalogue, and this is the pattern that we're looking at with the um, laurel and some cuts and some panel cutting. Um, it's called 21102. I think that makes it mid 1920s. Um, so, yeah, so this is all they've got here, and that glass isn't there. So, we'll move forward a little bit. So this is the 1939 catalogue. The pattern is now called Georgian. 
but it is still that 21102 pattern. Um, yeah, but that glass is still not there. So I think that glass was probably not made for a very long period of time. It's quite fancy. It might be that it just wasn't in the the black and white calendar um, catalog because I know that there are catalogs with coloured pages. But anyway, we can move on. And I have here a catalogue from the 1970s, and the pattern is now called Arundel, which is what I was calling it. So, strictly speaking, I think I should be calling it Georgian, because that's what it was called before the war. Um, I didn't realise that until I was looking at this specifically. So, And if you go over the page, it shows you all the shapes that they have for Arundel. It's still the same pattern number. But um, there's more but that glass isn't there. So, yeah, um, I think it was made between 1927 and 1939, which is, yeah, not great pinpointing, is it? Some really great things in here. Um, yeah, I don't know what this jug is. It's quite big and interesting, but I don't recognize it at all. Um, this looks Czech, Crisbo, maybe. Um, I don't know about that jug back there. Um, yeah, I don't know about those bars either. But yeah, there is some really nice things in here. Um, one at the back there, that might be um, Chinese. I'm not sure. It's got a Dartington palm dish. His looks different from mine. It looks steeper somehow. Um, but yeah, that's quite a nice one. And yeah, oh. And he's got a Rihimaki bars here. Um, yeah, it's good. There's some good things in here. Inside, there's some amazing glass. So let's get on and get inside. So I don't know if you realise the gears were crashing in my brain there. Trying to say when I said Rihimaki. And I was a bit unsure. I was a bit unsure. It looks like Rihimaki. It's cased. So I went on to the uh, 20th Century Glass website. This is as close as you get. I'm thinking I've seen it somewhere. So I looked again and I found this page. That's still not quite it. Yeah, it's cased. This is in the Romanian section and here he's saying style, Scandinavian style, Romanian or Japan. So, yeah, now I've seen, so I've been Googling, I've seen some with Romanian stickers on uh, that are this kind of shape, but they're not cased. So yeah, so that gives me, um, yeah, well, what was I doing? I was here, I think. Yeah, so this is me going through the Japan ones, and here it is there. Um, they're saying... Scandinavian style. They're still looking for sixty-five pounds, which is what's on that one there. Um, that one's a bit cheaper, um, but these ones, red ones, is sixty-five pounds. Um, is there any others for sale? Let me just double-click my way along a bit. No, no, no. But yeah, and I've been looking through these. Yeah, no, there's nothing here exactly. I then wound on the Romanian ones. And, um, yeah, these ones are still appearing. Um, so, yeah, but if you look at these ones, there's no, they're not cased. There's one with a label on. That doesn't look to be cased. There's that one which we were looking at earlier. I think that's all we're going to get here. Yeah. So, and I've done a bit of hacking around on on the um, Rihimaki ones, just do using some of my old hacking techniques, and um, yeah, that's not been helpful either. So the answer is, I'm not certain. Doesn't, he said Romanian or Japanese, but they still don't quite fit either of those. So I think it might still be Scandinavian. 
um, it looks nice and the glass looks nicer than the Romanian ones. So, yeah, I don't know is the answer. So I'm just inside the window here. Um, it's a bit cold, warmer, I should say. Yeah, this is nice. Nice rummer with panel cuts and um, grapes engraved around it. Um, it looks like it might be John Walsh Walsh, but I know other people were doing those kind of things. So this book is uh, The Glass of John Walsh Walsh by Eric Reynolds. And um, yeah, so you can see why I thought it might be, but I was kind of having my little doubts. And in actual fact, I don't think it is. Um, the way that they've engraved the, the grapes and that looks different. I mean, the scale cutting doesn't go all the way through on this one, so that's that's not an example. But the way the le the stem is put together is very different um, from that glass. That glass looks more Victorian, I think. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's John Walsh Walsh. As I said, lots of people were doing this style with the clear section with grapes then scale cuts and then you know a rummer shape body you know overall but um yeah i don't think it's john walsh walsh just in the window itself i've got some interest in rihimaki um don't know what this is here this blue one it looks like a shape that um dartington did but i don't think this looks too small and compact for them the book I'm looking at here is Dartington Glass, The First 20 Years by Linda and Stuart Smithson. And I think it's this glass here. It's got the same number of ribs. So this has got seven ribs. It looks the same. It's got the same flaring lip. Um, it's a highball glass. Now, the book here says this range was only made in clear. Yeah. Um... But I know this book's not always right because I'll show you something else that we saw earlier outside when we were looking outside. Here we go with the um, Anita Harris palm dishes from uh, 83 to 84. Now it says all made in clear only, but I've seen one on eBay in dark green and I've seen a, more than one in dark green. So I know that these were made in other colours. Um, so yeah, I think that's what it is. I think it's quite rare. I'm not the shape was so familiar. Um, so I think that's quite a rare piece of Dartington there in dark blue, uh, because I've not seen it before. What well, I forgot to say, it's from uh, 1974, and because it's got that FT number, that's a Frank Thrower design. But these are quite cute and um, yeah those are good ones in the back there I'll see if I can find the shape so it, those two blue vases say Rihimaki but he's got Japanese on here I can't find them as Rihimaki and they're not cased either so that makes them like and then he's saying um, most likely made in Japan having a look at what I've seen can find things with Japanese label on that are very similar but not exactly the same and not in the with the labels on not the same colorway so yeah I think it he's right but I can't pin it hard and fast so um, so that's it for those two blue ones however the, however the cheaper red vase at the back here that is Rihimaki. Um, it's a Tuliki vase by um, Tamara Allen, Aladdin from the 1970s. And he's even got a book reference for it and a page number, which is great. So I don't have that book, unfortunately. It's probably massively expensive, but I might have a look. Anyway, um, yes, I thought, does that mean £30 is underpriced? So I had a quick Google and I found one and 
it's if you include postage it's 56 pounds so 30 pounds seems like a a bargain for that one i don't know about the prices of the japanese ones yeah um i can't find any of that for sale so um but anyway that seems like a bargain and it's quite nice it's quite stylish this for them what else has he got here well this is interesting to me if you because you know me little miniature decanter um that's a Nelson type. See with a single ring on the neck. So that's that shape is from the 1830s. So that would be 1830s or 1840s. Um, oh, he's got a, bit of a flashed glass here with a label on it. Munger Kassen Casper BX Crystal. Um, yeah, I've never heard of them, but um, I'm going to pop around and see what it says on that label. Yeah, his date looks fine. He's got 1840, could be earlier than that, but that's probably a good date. Um, what else has he got here? This is interesting. Um, it looks kind of scandy. The stopper peg is a rounded shape and that makes me think it might be Polish but um, yeah that's a very generic <laughs> point of view from me I'm afraid but um, yeah I might try and find that one a pair of pedestal salt boats down here going around on this little thing um, these look it says Victorian I think they might be newer they might be Waterford I'm gonna try and find those um, so those salt boats weren't um, Waterford they, but I do believe they're reproduction so I have quite a lot of salt boats um, these are some of mine and these are Georgian ones and if you look at the bases on mine um, they don't look as nice and clean and clear as those ones this was probably the closest one um, this is probably a bit later than some of the others this one's more your 1830s 40s kind of period these ones are more of your Georgian ones um, but yeah none of them look like those did they just look too bright and shiny and nice and um, none of mine do and I could drag out several more and they still none of them will still look as nice as these what else is here yes morano fish it probably is morano it, it doesn't look very um romanian it's definitely not a romanian one yeah i don't recognize anything else that's here um so i'll come out of this window because i'm right in the window this is interesting it says it's victorian this is actually um Scandinavian um, from the 1920s in a sort of like Venetian manner for them. It might be orifers. I've been trying to figure out what these are. I have some more at home and I have um, glasses to go with it and claret jug but um, yeah it is a very nice thing. I really like it. Well I wouldn't have more if, if, um, if I didn't know but I don't know who the maker is. So quick peek into my collection here. Um, that you can't see behind me and yeah so these are the vi um, decanters that I have that are like that one and they have a very distinctive pattern on them so this is like a web pattern called M Muir with this wave on it but it's not Muir because look at this stopper yeah so this is like um, like an Orpheus, um Astrid decanter stopper but um yeah the way the stopper peg is is distinctly not web yeah uh, web doesn't do stopper pegs like that not rounded um, let me just go and grab something else so this is an astrid stopper you can see the similarity but it's a bit smaller but the peg is not like that either this is very um not rounded 
you know, so, yeah, it's not that either, okay, so I know it's not web, I mean, this is web, and, and I've looked at that stock with Pega, it's nothing like that, so I do have another candidate, and I'll show you that. The book I'm looking at here is The Decanter Ancient to Modern by Andy McConnell. Now, the body of those decanters is like this. From here down, it looks like this without those little blobbies on. Same wavy pattern, foot, this round with this little ribble here. Yeah, but the top is different, although mine, one, two of mine have got handles on. And then you've got this one here. And this one's with that stopper. So we'll go back to this one and we'll look it up. And it's a design from 1917 for Edwin Ollers for Costa. Okay. And then the one with the leaf on, which is number 11, is a 1920s design, Edwin Ollers for Elmi. So I think they're Edwin Oller's design and I think they're from the 20s um, yeah because the Astrid one that that Simon Gate did for Orifers with the leaf as well that's from the 1920s as well so that's my thoughts I haven't been able to pin it exactly because it's somewhere between that one and that one but they're both the same designer so I think the designer's Edwin Oller's I think it's probably for Costa because of this body um, but yeah it's difficult to um, exactly pin it without more catalogues which I don't have so I've come to my favorite cabinet here it's got some fantastic glass in here um, I'll start something I don't see often buried in a while I see them on eBay this William Yeowood decanter that's modern William Yeo Wood is still going. This is their website, and I had a look. And um, yeah, so this decanter here is not an exact match. So this one has got little panel cutting around the bottom. That one didn't. This one has got um, a lunar cut disc stopper. So they just had a disc stopper without the little bits cut out of it. Or it might be molded. I don't know. Difficult to tell with this. But um, yeah, uh, if that were uh, a genuine 18th century, that would be a lunar cut disc, it would be called. But this part is exactly the same as the one we were looking at. Yeah, and um, it's a half bottle and it's full retail price here is £265. So you could probably take a little bit of money off. Um, for it not having these little bits cut out the bottom. Oh yeah, look, I was saying real 18th century, so he's actually given you a date of what he's copying here. So, so there you go, so this is what it is. That's what the closest, so that's not brand new. This is what's selling today. Um, but yeah, that's as close as we can get um, from what they've got on their website. Um, but that's the way it goes. The molds for making these things are quite expensive. Um, so they would use them over and over again. You would train people to do these cutting techniques and you could mess around and change different things. So you'd make the stopper the same, but then not cut it. Maybe not cut this, but still do this the same because you've got someone that can do that. So yeah, it, things like that get fiddled around by all manufacturers, um, at least over the last, last um, hundred years plus. But that's not what I'm interested in. This is nice, nice, really nice. Um, that 18th century glass is a early 19th century. That looks like a early 19th century um, ale glass in the back there. The book I'm looking at here is English Drinking Glasses by Ronald Gabriel. This is the book I was reviewing the other day. And um, as I said, it doesn't have as many examples as they want so if you look at this glass here you can see it's got the same shape bowl it's got panel molding but it's twisted and that's called writhen and then it's got the same little 
um, collar around the base of the bowl. Okay, and this is a, a dwarf ale bowl, uh, glass as suggested by the bowl shape. So it's the bowl shape that's, that's a significant piece here. Okay, um, the one we were looking at, the stem and the way the foot is attached is not the same. So, but this part of it is the same. And this is dated for 1820. Now, if I go over the, a few more pages, now I'll have another glass that's very similar, apart from the bowl shape. So it's got the collar, it's got the panel moulding. Yeah, that's half up the bowl. The stem is very similar, and the foot is very similar. But the shape of the bowl has got a curve on it. Now, if that had a straight line, this bowl would be exactly the same. But you've seen the other, the other decant, uh, the other glass, and if you've got because the date is given on this is 1830, which is why when I was talking about that one, although these features don't exactly match, it's got features that are matching features of that period. So, yeah. I'm happy to say this is the one that we were looking at there is an early uh, 19th century glass. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to do every glass in the cabinet because I'll be here all night, but I will do some of them like this so you can see how I'm judging the dates on them. Yeah, I don't know about these. Um, the old Bristol blue. I don't know if they're... Yeah, difficult to say. This is nice. This is very nice. This is a early 19th century one, I think. Oh, he's got 1790. Might be right, because this is this is done in a very 1800 way. This is a book I'm looking at called um, Rummers and Goblets by Stephen Parry. The glass we were looking at is very shaped like this one and this one. In fact, I think it's probably more like this one but this one has got a drawn stem this one's got a separately added stem so it's got a separately added stem like this but it, the foot and everything is more like this one so yeah and this is what i was saying about these things where you can't find it's not like modern patterns where you can just go there it is it's a perfect match um in fact actually the, the little collar that you can see there if i get it to focus there is actually smaller and if you look at different shapes here the collar is probably more sized like that but because it's on a round bowl um, it doesn't pop out like that in fact actually the bottom of this one is more like it um, and what's he dating that one 1810 however it's all a mix and match and, and you're going yeah it's in this period so the thing you've got to focus on then is, is there anything in there that you can use to pin it down? And the cartouche. And the cartouche, to me, has an earlier date feel. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to find anything in this book that's like it, but if you, the writing in here is later, um, and it's not like that at all. Um, it doesn't... It's gelling more with other things that I have that are dated as 1800 in my books. So it could be 1790, like you said, but it's all, you know, speculation. Um, it's best guesses. You look at different things and you try and um, figure it out. And even the guy that wrote this, he doesn't actually have, apart from this one here, he doesn't have hard dates. And, um, and that, and um, yeah, and even then this foot is quite, I think it's a bit different. Yeah, th that one's got a bigger foot. So yeah, I, I'm I'm okay with this 1790. I think it's, it's reasonable. Um, it might be 1800, might be 1810, 1790's fine. Um, it's got some nice petal molded L glasses in the back there. Um, what else has he got? This is really unusual. Rummer. And yeah, the glass, looking at it, looks right as well. There are some really nice 
another ale glass and another one and you've got this I don't know what this pattern's called I might try and find that but look at this with the knob and you see the dome foot look how dome that is that is really nice so my books are failing me totally um, even some of my best ones are completely famous I mean either they completely ignore a band that looks like this or they call it a formal band which is or I'd call it a freeze but anyway they completely ignore it so I'm just going to show you so this is the pattern that we were we were seeing on that that glass okay um, with this like upside down Christmas tree and these eggs um, we've got another one here which is the closest glass I have to it unfortunately this one is a fake um, if you look at that foot look at that look at that how flat that is yeah um, yeah it's just fakey fake fake anyway um, so from there upwards it looks very similar to that and then from there downwards it looks like this so yeah um, I would date it like this one here which is sort of 1800 might be early 1800s might be late 1700s that kind of period um, this this um, freeze is called egg and dart this has a name I've seen it in one of my books and um, this these like little upside down Christmas trees they have a name I can't remember what it is um, yeah upside down Christmas tree is not right um, yeah so and then you go down the next level I'll stop a minute let my my camera cool down yeah so you've got a pair of um is it a pair oh, no no they're different two OG rummers look at this double OG it goes in and goes in and goes in and goes in look at that. they're really nice and one's got a bladed knob the other one's just got plain stem so I'm back with the um, rummers and goblets Stephen Parry booklet and yeah so um, double OG rummer here this one's got um, a ball knob the one we saw had a bladed knob um, and there was one with no knob and he's dating it 1800 dating that one 1800 yeah it's difficult to date these things um, this shape bowl has been going for quite a while so 1790s is fine I'm happy with that um, even though this book was saying and yeah I have to say I have another booklet by Stephen Parry and it and it's got a few whoppers in it so I'm not I'm not saying um these are perfect. Um the other ones are miniature decanters which is more my area. So um yeah it does have a few whoppers in it and um well not not whoppers, let's say errors. Yeah. Anyway, um yeah, I'm happy with what he's got on that. They, these are really cute, really nice. So and um, not very common. Um, got a nice cotton twist. Oh, it's a 20th century Georgian style. Yeah, it does. Yeah, when you look at it a bit more carefully. Look at the foot, it's so clean looking. When you compare it to some of the others that are in here. Um, yeah, that is too clean looking, that foot. What else is here? Continental glasses in the back there with the gold on, and he's got a faceted stem glass there. Same as the Victorian, yeah, they do, yeah, they look too nice. The feet, are, if proportionally, the feet are too small compared to the bowl for them to be Georgian. Um, yeah, they will get to them. Some little folded foot ram, dram glasses there. They're nice. And another faceted stem. This is an 18th century one. 
might be earlier than the date that he's got his 1790 seems to be his favorite date but might be earlier so the book i'm looking at here is uh, 18th century english drinking glasses by ellen bickerton and this is the shape of the glass that we were looking at there's another one this one's very close as well um, he's got 1785 um, this is supposed to be the book so I would go with 1785 yeah what's funny I'm just noticing just here look at these little birds just taking off um, little game birds or ho-ho birds they're sometimes called so the little glasses that with the folded foot that I just pointed out in the background they have little birds like this engraved on them too um, which helps you date them to the late 18th century so these um, ho-ho birds you see them on lots of things you see them on furniture mirrors all sorts of things have these little funny little scraggy headed birds yeah um, and um, yeah so that's a very late 18th century thing so yeah the little, three little glasses in the back there I would put them into the same date line I forgot to mention so these birds by the way um, the patterns that you see them in because you also see them in crockery uh, chinoiserie is the word you're looking for which means it's like the Chinese um, which was a fashion at the time and they were copying Chinese patterns so and that's a late 18th century style so there you go that's where it comes from another pair of fastened stem ones there's a cotton stem or a pate twist stem glass there that's really nice cordial glass with a small bowl there's some more cordial glasses in the back can you see them with the small bowls and then some more in the back there there's a little set of them yeah and these so yeah there's there's loads of nice things here come down another level there's a pair of um, lemon squeeze base um, dwarf ale glasses there's a set of um, can we see one of those set of wine glasses in the back there they look nice and um, they seem cheap for five I don't know Three little glass here, the folded foot. Can you see the folded foot? This isn't quite like that. That's a nice early one looking one. Look how fat the foot is compared to the top. Yeah, that's usually a sign. Early jelly glass. It's a really heavy foot. Small rummer. There's some great glass in here. There's one in the back there. It doesn't film very well. That looks like it's an Irish one. But I'm pretty certain that's an Irish one. Hmm. Yeah. That might. I'll see what else I see. But yeah, that's nice. So, this is the glass. I bought it. Um... So why did I buy this glass? Because it was £35. Um, I'll tell you one thing. One, I'm a sucker for Irish glass. And why do I think this is probably Irish? So these little swags, this kind of swag you do see it on Irish glass. It's in my books. But this little sprigs here. Yeah. So you have to remember that com in comparison to English glass, there wasn't much Irish glass, okay? Um, I've, I've heard a tenth, yeah, at the same time as it was being made. Now, I've only ever seen, so these sprigs are not common. I've only ever seen them in one other place with this like three little sprigs like this. 
and yeah, there you go, and double them up there. So this is a very Irish decanter. This is a very Irish motif. This is a kind of yeah, could be Irish, could be English, but I've only ever seen this once before, and it's here. I think I've got some another decanter which has got some sprigs or no it's a rummer and it's got these sprigs and it's got this as well so yeah it's this kind of motif this is the only place I've ever seen it on things that are very Irish so I think this stands a good chance especially um, this is like it's like half of the vesica that you see on cork glasses so yeah I, I feel I said there's lots of motifs you see them over and over and over again you go English 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 when you see something that you go I've not seen that before or I have seen it once before and it's related to something specifically it makes you think but anyway that's why I bought it I think it's Irish I might be wrong but I think it is so it's mine now anyway it does have a few little chips on it, so it wasn't a bargain. Um, but I think it's a very rare thing because, yeah, that motif is not common. Um, yeah, he's got this one wrong. So this is Stuart Crystal. Um, Designed by Ludwig Knai, Stratford Pattern, 1921. Yeah, even the way that, see the way the handle is put on? This is the post 1870 style for putting the handle on. So, yeah, this is wrongly marked, but it's still, I've never seen a small one though, so, um, yeah, but it, it's like an absolute miniature of the full size ones they do, like a, I think a two pint and a three pint version, but I've never seen it this small. So I'm looking at the um, Stuart Crystal catalogue for 1927 and there's your jug although this is a, a full size jug um, so it would be a couple of pints there's one I think that's because of the way the handle is here comes over the top there's a bigger one where the handle where the top of the handle is level with the top of the jug so yeah this is two pints and I think the other one is three um, so the actual Thing is a bit, bit slightly beefier, but that, but the actual thing comes up a bit higher as well in relation to the handle. But yeah, this is the pattern. Um, so that's what that little jug is. I've never seen one as a small one though, but it is an absolute miniature of this. It's exactly the same. Um, so I'm very comfortable that that's what it is. Um, even though this is the drawing, I've got a pile of them down in my shed, all different colours. So I'm very comfy that that's what that is. I was um, filming that section last night and this morning when I was editing it, I thought, oh, I'll come down and um, show you um, the jugs that I have in my shed. So this is the same jug in clear. Um, and then, yeah, there's some, some of the other colors um, that it comes in. And then, yeah, and you can see the size difference here I was talking about with them. I think I was two and three pinters. Um, so anyway, yep, yeah, that's my um, Stuart Crystal Stratford jugs. There's a bunch of um, pedestal open salts here. All various ages on them. Um, ones I like are, there's a pear in the middle. They might be um, sweet meats though, but they're very nice with the lemon squeeze base. Um, there's one in the back that I particularly like, that one there, but you can't see it very well. You see it's got lemon squeeze base as well. Um, but yeah, there's some nice one. This one's unusual. Oh, So, this one looks a bit different. I think this might be an Irish one, because it's got this wheat husk motif. Um, the way the lemon squeezes is a bit different as well, so I feel, yeah, this one's a bit different, and I think 
this one is Irish. So, I did. I was saying a few minutes ago that Irish glass is very rare, etc., etc., and you, you think I'm picking out, you know, loads of Irish glass, but in actual fact, there's only two pieces in that whole cabinet. I'm going. I think those are Irish, and I'm going to show you why with these two pieces here. Um, so this is the motif I was talking about. It's not the most common motif in the world. Um, this is a little. It's either a very big sweet, or a very big um, salt, or um, sweet meat dish, or just a little trinket dish type thing. I bought this from Ireland. I did get it off eBay, but it did come from West Coast, I think. So, yeah, this came from Ireland. You see this motif in a lot of books. Yeah. And then this decanter is a see this base is a typically Irish base you don't see this on English glass and here you go with this motif the same motif that we're looking at this is an Irish motif that you see on a lot of Irish glass as well and then two bladed rings tells you and the slim top B Edwards of Belfast so yeah so this is I can pretty accurately say this is B. Edwards Belfast, and I have shown it to the Museum of Ulster. Um, they thought it might be as well. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, no, they didn't say it wasn't Irish, so, um, but it's most likely B. Edwards of Belfast. But anyway, there you go. Um, this is another Irish motif. Now, you can't rely on this entirely. Waterford were making this post 1850 on there. Star, I mean, at 1950, so you'll see this on modern glass. Other people were using it, and you just have to look at the age and context. But at the time, that I would date that that lemon, that um, salt boat to about 1800. Um, yeah, and it was being made contemporary with these things, which makes it most likely to be Irish. Be these are nice as well, jelly glasses. It's got 38 on two, which is good. Good price, consider. These are, he's got 1810. I think these might be earlier. The cutting looks like it's foot treadle cutting as opposed to uh, steam powered cutting. So then maybe a bit earlier. Over the top of the cabinet, with the um, nice glasses in, is this. Look at this, this is nice. I wouldn't mind having this for my wall. Yeah. It's cool. I don't know if it's a print or if it's a... Let's go and get down here. So it's difficult to tell. But I will look that up. See if I can find this. Should everybody be running around buying it? Yeah, it's cool. It's very cool. As you can see from all that old glass, yeah, trying to figure out the dates and stuff is, is difficult. There's lots of copies. There were loads of glass houses in the UK at that time, all busy copying each other and then having slightly different timelines. And yeah, there's no, everything's, have, you know, free blown. So there's no like fixed patterns and stuff. It's all, you know, speculation quite often there's odd bits with dates on other bits that you can pin things down to to say this is a base reference that i can use but yeah it's all it's all a bit of a mess really but anyway um with that said i hope you really enjoyed this video there will be a part two so please watch out for that it's probably gonna take me another couple of days to edit that one together and um yeah so uh, with that said uh all the contact details for Warwick Antique Centre will be in the description below, as well as all the references. And yeah, please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs>